Well, hello everybody. How are you today? It's Sharon here from the blog I Restore Stuff. Ready to? Um, are you ready to join me in a live DIY project today? Um, here on our Essential Stencil page. Let me know where you're tuning in from once you joined. Once you've joined the live. If you are watching the replay, don't forget to comment the word replay uh, for a chance to win prizes in the 24 hours after the live has finished. So hello everyone. Let me find our, our live here on the page. Is there anyone um, new to stenciling? Maybe they haven't popped on yet. Maybe you need to share it with some friends. So sprinkle the love out there. Hi Cheryl, how are you? And I see Barbara, Elisa's here and Tammy. We're all starting to jump on now. How exciting. So um, this is going to be a fun Christmas project today. I've found a frame at, you know, my thrift store finds that I love to, I love to go thrifting, thrift shopping. This was only a couple of dollars and it looks brand new. Uh, it's just a 12 by 12 inch frame which suits our 12 by 12 stencils perfectly. So that's what I'll be stenciling today, not on the glass, but we'll be making a project to go in that. This is a raw wood frame. In fact, I have a link, an Amazon link in the description of the live of where you can find some 12 by 12 wooden frames. In fact, any sizes. So if you want to do something like this similar, but in a different size stencil, you can today. I'm just showing you some of the things that we're going to be stenciling with today. I'm using coffee grounds today. I have literally just grabbed some grounds. We have a espresso machine, so it does, you know, the little group head that you put a um, shot of coffee in. And so I've literally got some coffee grounds here that we're going to use to do some staining of some paper. Hi, Sandy. Thanks so much for jumping on and saying hello. Hi, Martha from Ohio. We've got everyone's joining in. How great. Don't forget to join in the conversation for a chance to win prizes at the end of our live here today. The other thing I'm going to be using is some old sheet music. So if you have some lying around at home or these are some things that you might also pick up in thrift stores um, or op shops as we call them here in Australia. Sometimes they have this gorgeous vintage um, you know, music covers on them too and I love the fonts and the lettering on some of these. Very cool. So, um, you know, different colors and all sorts of things. Sometimes it's great just framing it like that. In fact, I found some sheet music that was actual Christmas music. And I, so I just popped that straight in a frame like this. It says gold, frankincense and myrrh and it's a Christmas carol. So look at that. And so I just popped that in a frame and you could do that. But we're going to do some stenciling on some of these sheet music today. But I want to show you some other fun things that we can do with it. Two of the sets I'll be using today are the Love Came Down set and of course the links are all in the description of the live for any of these that we're using today. And this is the Christmas Angel 3-pack and I'll be showing you something that we're using in that on our sheet music. Now the other thing, I just literally came up with this live last night, so here today in Australia, just to explain, I'm in Australia, you're probably in the USA. Um, it's Thursday morning here, so you have your lives, you know, 7 p.m. over there. CST is when I go live every week. So if you, um, if, you, if you don't know when to jump on, there's ambassadors every day of the week. You just go on the Essential Stencil website, I mean the Facebook page, and all the events are in the event section right there to show you when we go live. And you can join and, you know, say I'm going to any of those events, and I think that you get a notification then when we go live. So anyway, Literally last night, I didn't have a plan and I woke up this morning and just had a plan. So sometimes it's a little bit like that when, when I go live. Oh, I know that some of the amb other ambassadors have a similar, similar thing going when you're like, out of all the ideas, we've been doing this for a few years now and um, sometimes you're like, oh, I've run out of ideas and then something comes to mind. So I walked into my craft room, or my study, my office where all the storage is. I don't do my lives in the study because it's a carpeted floor and things could get messy. So yes, Sonia, thrift stores are a great place to look for anything. In fact, I think I found these there too. And these are just memory scrapbook refills because look, they're 12 by 12 size. And I thought I'm going to use one of the blank sheets out of there to 
use for my 12 by 12 frame to stencil on and they're the perfect size. I didn't even think about that going together. So I'm going to use one of these today. So you know they come as a sheet but often when you're scrapbooking anyway you, you don't use this sheet, you're using some pretty fancy paper. So I'm just going to do that, take this 12 by 12 paper and we're going to be staining this with some coffee stain. You can use tea bags as well so you're welcome to use whatever or you can just use some brown paint watered down if you like. So we're just going to do that first. In fact I might even stain the frame because this is a, a raw timber frame. We can stain this. So the first thing I want to do, hello Janice, thank you guys for all joining in on the live today. I'm looking down at the computer at the same time because sometimes I'm not seeing the comments up here. Let, letting us know where you're tuning in from. Join in the conversation for a chance to win prizes at the end of our live and um, let your friends know that we are live here today. I'm just taking out the backing and the glass from the frame. Let me just point us down a little bit to where our project is going on. So don't forget to let people know about our live today. Um, and I, if, I, if you have not met me, if you're new to stenciling here today, my name is Sharon and my blog is I Restore Stuff. Oh, I didn't know that this frame had some extra little bits and pieces. Look at this. It's got some other little things to make it look like a little shadow. Oh, and that's, that's interesting. <laughs> so that is, we'll have to pull this all apart. And um, it's got these little wood bits here. Now the ones that I linked in the description of the live, I don't believe they have these, but this is almost like a bit of a shadow box. So I may have to stain those as well. Well, that's just got made my, my live a little more interesting because we've got these. They are square so I can, I don't know why they hadn't glued that together. Anyway, you probably sit them in here at the end when you've finished your frame. So I'll pop this backing aside. We're going to be using white paper, staining that and at the same time we could stain this frame. Now if this coffee stain doesn't work out quite, what I think I might do, if it doesn't work out quite dark enough, I can do a darker stain maybe even with the black paint that I'm using today. So if you've never stained anything before, there are so many different ways to stain something. Yes Bonnie, if you go to the description of the live, I have um, popped the Amazon link in there for the 12 by 12 frames. I'm going to pop these coffee grounds into this little container here instead of doing it on my paper plate because I feel like it'll be a little le less messy <laughs> in here. And I'm just going to break that up. It's just literally coffee, used coffee grounds. It's just run through a, they're a little bit damp. It's probably from my morning coffee this morning. Um, all I'm going to do, we're going to create a stain, a, um, stain the paper. I've got one that I prepared earlier so I'll show you that in a minute because that one's dry and this one may take a little time to dry. Okay so just popping that in the centre of our shot there and there's my frame. Oh I can smell <laughs> the coffee. It does fit, smell like freshly ground coffee. Um, just adding a bit of water to the coffee grounds. Like I said before you can use um, a tea bag to do this too and it could get a little bit wet. I'm not going to worry about um, you know getting all the lumps out because we literally just want to create a bit. I did this other one, I just literally smeared my fingers all over there but you could be a little less messy perhaps with some kind of a brush. So we're just staining some paper with some coffee grounds, just dipping it in my watered down coffee grounds here and um, wiping it off on the side. You may still get some little bits of grounds. <coughs> Yeah, see we're getting little bits of grounds on there. And so I'll just sweep them. I did bring my dustpan and brush so I can sweep them off. <laughs> Have you ever done this before? Has anyone done some staining some stained some paper? I have seen um, things where you can actually dip trays, um, make a tray full of you know tea bag. Um, mixture or um, whatever or coffee grounds or whatever and literally soak it into the, the tray of um, mixture. So add a whole bunch of papers in there. So I'm just creating a bit of a 
an antiqued kind of look using coffee grounds and making the good old mess while we're here. But it's fun. Hi Janice, you said you haven't done this. Sue hasn't done this before either. Well, I hadn't probably until this morning. So like literally I was um, this morning, let's just get messy. I was dipping my finger into the coffee and just kind of going like this. And it probably made it a little bit more haphazard than, than this. So maybe I'll just do that. Dip my fingers in. And you can probably see some little grounds on the paper here, but we want to make it so that it's a little bit more haphazard and not so streaky. And we are going to be doing some fun, something over the top of this. So this it's more the outside bits that I want to kind of get a bit more stained and and dirty looking. Kind of antiquing things here. Now, like I said, we could uh, do the same thing to the frame and just stain that a bit because this is a raw timber, a raw wood. Not sure how that'll work out, but you know, like, um, oh, Mary says you've tea stained fabric but not paper. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to let that dry a little bit and we'll sweep off those little grounds in a minute. You can see the paper's kind of wrinkly, so you may want to, I'm going to try this on the frame. Are you ready? Oh, we're not in the shot there. Sorry guys, let me just lift that up a little. Um, let's see if that works. A bit of a staining on here. It's making it a little bit more brown and golden. Oh, we are making a mess. It's, see how it would be a lot nicer with um, tea bags because you wouldn't get all the coffee grounds, obviously. It's making it a little bit too golden for my liking. It's sort of more of a golden colour. I, like, I think I might do what I was originally going to do was the black stain. So that's enough of our coffee grounds today. We will um, clean up my mess. So once you've got your paper stained and, you know, it does look cool, but it does make a bit of a mess if you're using just coffee grounds. And I will sweep this up. And what I'll do is I'll stain this using um, some black paint because I think that will create a lovely look as well. I love using some of the black stains. gives it more of a... Um, because that will tie in then with the stencil because we're going to use uh, black for our stencil today. So shaking that off and I'll get my hair dryer in a minute and dry that. It's, this is probably another example of, yeah Sharon, I'll use the tea bags, thanks. Never mind about making a mess with the coffee grounds. <laughs> but it was a fun experiment, wasn't it guys? You know me. I love to experiment with you all. Okay, now if I hit this with the hairdryer, we want to dry it, but we also want to make sure that it's going to be a little bit flatter. Oh, Peggy, what a great idea. Strain the coffee grounds before you use it. Well, that would have made a lot of sense, wouldn't it? You could literally, it, because um, I've got a espresso machine, I could have probably poured a shot of espresso. But yeah, using the used grounds, just strain them off. The most simplest, obvious idea. <laughs> Hi Tracy, thank you so much for sprinkling, for sharing our live around. Mary, do you iron your paper after it dries? You could. That would be a great idea. You could iron it. Um, I don't have time to iron mine right now. Or the other thing, the idea is uh, if you got some heavy books and sat that on top of that, you could, you could do that idea. So here's one that I did prepare earlier. It's probably a little bit lighter. I don't know if you can tell the difference there. I might just turn a light on. I feel like we're a little bit in the dark here. There we go. I hope that's a little bit better. 
So this is one I prepared earlier and this is one that I've just done now. So we can use that one later. I'll use this one that's completely dry and it is slightly flatter. Right, so now we're going to get our sheet music. And remember I just gathered some sheet music from the thrift store or wherever. And we're going to cut it to size. And I'm just going to grab a piece. I think this is violin music. So I'm just going to grab a piece of the sheet music. It's quite old. You could even use printed, you know, copies of sheet, um, sheet music if you wanted to and then stain that paper. Uh, but we're going to use this. Now I'm going to create sort of like a center. Because the sheet music, um, it doesn't fit the whole size, but I want to use it just as a bit of a feature on the paper background. I'm going to make it so that it sits in a bit of a square. So to do that, let's see which side I want to use. Probably that side. I just use a ruler and we're going to rule off just so that I can get it straight. Let's get these edges correct. And I could just, you know, cut randomly, but I want to just get those sides nice and neat because you've got, you know, your staple marks and things like that on the side. Hi Linda, arriving late. That's okay, you can catch anything that we missed in the replay. So the first thing I want to do is just cut down these sides and then we'll figure out what is our square. Because our, our paper background is 12 by 12, I'm just going to make it um, this square as well. I don't know what size yet. I'll see what size these, this width is and then I'll make the music shorter to be the same size. Sides, all four sides the same. Let us know where you're tuning in from if you, you've just jumped on. Um, you haven't missed much. We are staining if you've just joined me. Um, we're sta we've stained this using some coffee grounds or you could use tea bags or whatever you like. Then we're going to grab some sheet music. We're just making, creating a fun background. Now I'm going to choose where I want my bottom point to be because I'm going to be using this. I'm going to create a bit of a square to go in the centre. So I might just cut off that whole section down the bottom. And then we'll figure out, should have measured our width and then I could have done that just now. But we'll just take this off. So I could use either side of this because it's, it's two-sided. So what I didn't think about is, what is that? I don't even know. Does that sound weird to you when I say that? I don't know what that is. Eight and what's one little notch before the nine? What does that make it? So I'm going to make a mark here where I need to cut the side to make this square. Oh, and then we'll need to draw the line. So because I'm drawing lines on this, where did my mark go? There it is. Um, because I'm drawing lines on this, I don't want my pen marks. And you know, you could cut just inside the lines too. There could, that could be an option. Just creating a sheet music background for our stenciling project today. Now any of the stencils products from Essential Stencil, don't forget to use my code iRestoreStuff and get 10% off anything in the Essential Stencil shop. That includes all the brushes, their wood tags and everything. So I can see slight pen marks on the side there. So I'll flip it over and use this side. And all we're going to do, mm, doesn't quite, I feel like those margins are nicer. That's okay. It will, we will get the overall effect. So what I'm going to do now is glue this to our paper. I was going to stain our frame too. We'll do that in just a minute. Okay, gluing this to the side here. Oh, can anyone hear our next door neighbor's dog? When they go out, he, he's in the backyard and he's having a little bit of a howl, adding to the sound effects in our background here. No birds today, we have dogs instead. Okay, so placing that as central as I can. I'm going to eyeball it, but you know, get your ruler out if you're, if you're a bit nervous about not getting it centered correctly. 
And <clears throat> once again, I was saying you can flatten that paper to make it a little bit more, but it will flatten in the glass, I feel like, so when we put it inside the frame. So we've got that ready. Let's just stain our frame before we go on with our stenciling today. Now to go to use a frame, I mean to stain, create a stain, I'm just going to use some of this black. And where's my paper plates that I had before? I'm just going to use um, a bit of black and a, a brush, just a bit of water as well. So I want to wet my brush really well and I'm just going to grab, grab a little bit of paint on the brush and it's made it quite, quite wet. And that's because this is a raw timber, it's soaking right in. Oh, I think we need some more water. So we're just going to dip that again. Has anyone else done this? <coughs> yes, Lynn's got a great tip there. Staining with soaked tea bags can be done by laying the sheet of paper in a cookie sheet and pouring the strong tea over it. Allow it to soak a while, check it often, and then you will need to, while it's drying probably, or even after it's dried, you'll have to add something heavy on top of it to... Um, Oops, can't see that, can you? So you can still see the grain of the wood. Yeah, to um, flatten it out is what I was trying to say before. I go on with another another thing and forget to finish my sentences. Okay, so we're just staining this piece of wood. If you have never stenciled before, um, we're about to show you some great stenciling tips, but here on Essential Stencils page, every day one of the ambassadors goes live to show you some fun tips and ideas. I'm just going to grab a wet piece of a wet cloth here and just wipe back that stain so it's not so dark. You can see how you can still see the grain of the wood through there. Now I've just used a water-based paint. This is Coal Black by Fusion Mineral Paint. And I do have an affiliate link for Fusion Mineral Paint. If you'd like that link, let me know in the comments and I'll um, send you that. But I use it, I sell it here in Australia as a furniture paint. Um, Fusion Mineral Paint's uh, great for furniture, sticks really well to pieces that you don't have to do much prep at all. You don't even have to sand them back to a raw finish. Uh, you can just paint straight over the top of your already varnished or painted pieces just with a, a bit of prep work, a little minimal prep, we say. Um, but you can find lots of tips and tutorials over on my uh, blog site, which is irestorestuff.com. So just staining... Staining, staining, just using um, any craft brush will do really. You could even do this with a cloth. I feel like I'm going to need some more paint on there. So just dipping it again in here, dipping the brush in the water to create a stain. And I will seal it after this. This is a water-based paint also. <clears throat> Otherwise, it wouldn't work to just dip it in water to thin it down. So I love working with water-based products because they're easy to clean up. Easy to clean up. Let me see if I can... <laughs> yeah, Sandy says the poor dog is lonesome. I can hear him howling every now and then. He sometimes just does it when they first uh, leave the house and then he settles down after a while. So. Oops, see this is why I have to stand up because I can't see over here and have you watch at the same time. Staining, staining, staining. Um, Donna says you usually paint stain with a baby wipe. Oh, I would think that would pull it off too. I guess it would um, make it thinner. 
I'm not so. Mm. Do you do that with the water based paints, Donna? That's interesting. I will have to try that. <laughs> okay, so just again, just wiping across the across the grain, but this one's kind of a little bit thinner than that first coat with a wet cloth. Adding a bit more paint on my brush. And see the difference between the raw and then the stain. You can see that up close. It's starting to dry on this side slightly. But that will dry probably to a bit of a chalky, not too chalky, but it'll, it'll dry to a bit of a um, faded look until we get a sealer on it. Once you seal the stain, it will be um, nice and a little bit more solid and it'll come up a really nice finish. If we have time at the end, I'll, I'll seal that and show you. Otherwise, stay tuned and you'll see the finished pictures that I always post later on, either on my page or on in the Stencil of the Month Club, if you're in the Stencil of the Month Club. Speaking of which, there's eight more days until Stencil of the Month Club opens for intake again. So tell your friends, it is really worth joining Stencil of the Month Club. Everyone who's in there loves it. You get shipped three large stencils to your door every month and they all revolve around a theme or they're all interchangeable. Um, so that will open up on the 14th of October, again for seven days only. So tell your friends, get ready for Stencil of the Month Club to open up again. It, will, it is lots of fun. All right, going to wipe that back again. And there we have finished that staining. But remember, we have these little pieces of wood. If you missed earlier when I pulled apart the frame, these sit uh, inside the frame to create, let's see if I can do this all at once. <laughs> To create sort of a, um, I don't know if it's a, a window or a, um, a, what do you call it? Window, uh, box frame, window frame, what's that called? What's the word I'm trying to think of? I think it's called a window frame. I don't feel like I'm saying the right word. Someone help me out there. Uh, the stain, Linda, is, it's just coal black in Fusion Mineral Paints um, range of paint, so it's just a water-based acrylic paint. You can do this with your other acrylic paints too, it doesn't have to be um, a furniture paint. Okay, that's one side, do these all at once, because I don't know which side is going to be <laughs> on the bottom of the frame. I'm just going to do all of the sides. Turn it round, how quick is this? Let me see, did anyone, shadow box, thank you Donna, Elisa, thank you, I'm like, shadow frame, yes, shadow box, that's what the word I was trying to think of, I was like, something's not right, it's not sounding right, I can always trust you guys to help me out with my words, <laughs> shadow box, so yeah, it creates a little bit of a gap between the glass and the frame, so that'll be cute to see how that turns out, have I done all four sides now, oh, one more to go, there we go, and obviously all four sides aren't going to be seen. It's just that it's quicker for me to do this than lay it all out on the frame to figure out which way goes where. All right, so we'll leave those off to dry. And we'll be getting on with our stenciling now. So those are the little framed bits that will sit on the frame and we'll let this dry also. Let's bring back our stencil. Now here's our essential stencil brushes and here's our picture. If you missed this part, we just stained the background with some <coughs> um, coffee grounds. And you can use tea bags if you like. Probably a better idea because I made a mess. Um, oh, thank you Cindy for sprinkling. Thank you. Okay, so here we have just some sheet music cut in a square on our 12 by 12 inch um, scrapbooking paper. It's just a scrapbooking background. You could use a different scrapbooking background also, but we just stained this one with some tea. Now my stencils are here. So this is the one 
I'll be using two sets today, and both of these links are in the description of the live. This one's called Christmas Angel, and this one is called Love Came Down. This is a mini set, six by six. I'm just going to use these ones for some additional words that I'll be putting on the, on the stencil. Now, <clears throat> I'll show you what I did want to use, um, which is currently sold out. So, but there are several Christmas designs that you could still do this effect on. First of all, I'll be using the angel, okay? I'm going to place the angel on here, make the angel um, blow his trumpet there. <laughs> it has three designs in, oh, here the angels sing and peace on earth. So there's that one. Let me just open and show you the peace on earth stencil because that is just gorgeous too. Let me get it out. <clears throat> yes, so the dimensions of this one is 12 by 12 because that fits perfectly in our frame. And the mini sizes are 6 by 6. So we have, oh, hear the voices, uh, hear, hear the angel voices, sorry, and then peace on earth, which has got a gorgeous wreath. And remember that so many of the stencil sets can be used for other things. So you could pop this gorgeous wreath somewhere. You could even use that on this, this stencil design as well. Um, and then add some different words inside. So those are those two, but we'll be using the angel from that set today. Now that set is called Christmas Angel and Essential Stencil. Have the link there. I've also got it in the description of our live today. Now the other sets that you could use, now this one's just sold out, unfortunately, but if you do have this one, this would be another beautiful one to go on the music background and it has the birch wood on the back. There's also this one, all is Calm, which has a gorgeous row of Christmas trees that I thought would be beautiful along the bottom. And you could put whatever other words on the top. You know, you could put it even O Come All You Faithful on the top. Lots of different ideas you combine with this idea. So let's get started on our angel. Now I noticed that the angel, the trumpet comes close to the edge and his foot is a little bit further away from the edge. So what I'm going to do is center that to my my paper and it happens to fit on the music sheet, although the wings and these don't, but like with the Christmas tree idea, it would have gone right across past the music, which is great. I like that effect as well. So um, we're going to make our angel sit approximately well centered to the sheet music with foot going down here, little wing tip coming off there. Um, I'm not going to use, well, maybe I could use some tape today. I was going, I was going to just leave it off, <laughs> but um, just in case, because I don't want it to tear the paper because if you do put painter's tape on, taper, on paper, oh, my words today, it may tear, so we don't want that to happen. So what I might do is just tape it to my mat that I'm working on underneath on my table, just on those edges. Now I'm going to be using that same coal black. This is Fusion Mineral Paint Coal Black. And I'm just dipping the paintbrush into the end there, and I did forget to bring a cardboard to offload onto. I'll show you this stencil in a minute, but I'll just offload onto my uh, paper paper plate here. Now I'm going to use the largest because we've got a large area. That's what these large brushes are great for. So this is a 7 8 inch brush and they come in a set of four with different sizes, small right through to the large. And um, you can order those using my code also and you'll get 10% off the brushes. So Essential Stencil has put our Christmas Angel Set 3 pack in the end comment there. So if you did want to quickly go over and add that to your cart, you can do that and jump straight back over. And I'll still be here. <laughs> so I've just offloaded most of the paint off the brush. However, because we've got this huge space in here, I'm going to add a little bit more to my brush and do that first because look, it's just taking up a lot of space in there. So I'm even going to add more, but I do want to rub it around in the bristles. And I want to come in from the edges. And swirl that around in the center to kind of offload your brush in the center of the design. And then as you go around, add a little bit more but we don't want to blob it in the center. So I do like to still offload my brush a bit and pull it in from the center so you're not getting that bleed through underneath. And we are 
are stenciling over the top of our sheet music. Oh, the sheet music's upside down. It is too. Oh my goodness, Donna. Oh, what was I thinking? Oh no, it's too late now. I can't go back. <laughs> so I will have to do another one after our live so that I can do it properly. Oh my goodness, lucky I made another, another stained sheet, hey? I can't have an upside down music angel, which is a great thing that it's not permanent, it's not on a sign, it's just on a piece of paper. So this is why we practice and this, my friends, is why I've got you lovely people here in the comments to tell me the things I'm doing wrong. Oh dear, the sheet music is upside down. Maybe non-musicians wouldn't notice, but well, when you've got the little letters there telling you. Anyway, thank you guys. It will still look good upside down. Debbie, thank you so much for making me feel better. <laughs> I feel silly. Oh dear. I was trying so hard to remember that before I went live. I'm like, oh, I'll have to remember to do that. <laughs> yes, Joyce Ann, life happens. You gotta love it. Yeah, well, this is my practice, okay? This is my practice one, my example of what not to do. Don't make sure you've got your sheet music up the right way. I do like this angel, trumpeting angel. Has anyone else got this set already? I think it was from maybe last year. Um, but if you're new to the essential stencils, maybe you don't have this one yet and you can drop it in your cart. Use the code iRestoreStuff and get 10% off. In fact, 10% off everything in the store, not just this one. Okay, here's our angel and our upside down sheet music. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, Bonnie, I think. I think um, not many people will notice. All right, so I've, I've laid that down on there, sort of central, so you can see how gorgeous that looks, even though the music is upside down. There's my trumpeting angel. It's gonna look beautiful. Okay, so removing that tape, now I'm gonna add some words up here. <coughs> and I'll clean off my stencil later. Now the next stencil I want to use, I just thought, oh, we could add some words up here or down here. It doesn't matter where um, where you add them. But this is a great set to, this is the set I'm going to use today. But as usual, I love to show you other sets that you can use. Uh, so another set you can use is the 6x6 six six stencils with Oh Holy Night. Oh, it doesn't have a name on it. Come let us adore him. Oh Holy Night would work good with this one, these words in this 3x3 three three mini. But let's have a look at this one. I think it's from this one's uh, just from the recent collection and it is called Love Came Down. And we have the Love Came Down with the, the manger scene. And then, oops, we've got our instructions. Then we've got Oh Holy Night on the back there. That's beautiful with the stars. So that's gorgeous also. And then we've got uh, Christ is Born. So it's a three pack but it's a bonus. Is that right? Yes, a three pack with a bonus. The bonus is O Holy Night. So there's Christ is Born. I think I was going to use that one. Let's have a look. And then Joy to the World. Okay, so you could use the words for any one of them. I wouldn't probably use the pictures for this just because you've got the angel there, so it's kind of busy already. Let's see which one I was going to do. You could do O Holy Night and put the O Holy Night down here or, you know, O Holy up there and Night there. But I think that I was going to do... Christ is born as if the trumpeting angel was announcing that. So I think that's a fun idea. So I'm going to put Christ is up the top and I want that to come off the sheet music so it's up in the corner. Um, but then I'm going to take this and add the born down here. So let's see how we go with that. Remember, my sheet music is upside down, uh, but I will have to do another one so that... Um, it can look better for, for the pictures. <laughs> okay, so the other thing that I do need to tape is the, I want to tape off the word born and I think I could still use those stars so I don't think that matters. So I want to tape off the word born and the manger that's there right beside the, the word. So making sure that's all taped off just so that my brush doesn't accidentally 
get those. All right, going back in again with some of our black paint. You can use any acrylic paint. Um, I'm just using my Fusion Mineral Paint. Yeah, a lot of people love these brushes from Essential Stencil. So same brush. I could use a smaller brush for this because it's got smaller words, but because I've already got black paint on this brush, I'm just going to go ahead and use it. I'm using a swirling motion to do my brush just because I feel like we get better coverage doing that. Uh, but you can kind of see how I'm kind of pouncing and then swirling like that. Those little stars are kind of tiny, so you might need to just wriggle your brush a bit in those. So do a little pounce. If you can see, you can kind of see if it's getting in there nicely or not. Um, well, I was going to bring it down further, but I've stuck the tape to the edges. The stars may not turn out um, so bright in this instance, only because we've got uh, sheet music busy in the background. But you could tape those off to the stars. <coughs> or you could um, even tape those off and then use those stars and twinkle them out outside, depending on how busy you want it to look. Sometimes simple is best. So let's have a look what that looks like. And we've got Christ is up the top there. See how I've made it come off the, off the edge of the sheet music? So it's up the top here. And then we will put the word born on the bottom. So I'm going to move this tape carefully because sometimes those little those little inside bits of the letters we don't want them to be pulling off. Oh this tape is very tacky. <coughs> so if your tape is very tacky and you don't want it to be so tacky uh, one of the good ideas is just to rub it on, I don't know, you can't see that, um, rub it on your hand or a piece of fabric uh, just to get that, you know, less tacky. I rub it on my apron sometimes just to get that not to be so tacky. Now I do want to cover over also the manger here, so I'll just pop that over here and then I'll add this on this side and... Let's just have a look at that. I kind of want it to line up a little bit, well, maybe a little bit more central down here, but I want it to come down probably in line with the foot and sort of in line with the, the end of the words here maybe. You could line it up however you like though. Okay, one more dip of the brush into the black so we can finish this off. If you think your brush is going to go close to the edge too, it's probably a good idea to uh, tape that. I'm sure not to be very careful not to go near this edge because I'm using a big brush. And if I was using a smaller brush, it would be a lot easier to control it over the smaller, thinner letters. So let's keep that in mind. I was just being lazy, didn't want to wash out the second brush. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Oops, just being careful not to stick that on the paper. There we go. So we've got Christ is born. Not too bad. Maybe I could have put born up here a little bit and made it come out here, but you get the idea of all the different things that you could do with that. So now let's see if we can get a little bit of, um, I was just going to show you how the finish, like a matte finish or a tough, a sealer, I'm using tough coat sealer. So we've got little pieces of the frames here. So we'll let this dry while we're sorting out our frame. And the frame, I can feel it's still just a little, a little damp. Uh, these little wood sticks are just a little bit damp. They go in the frame. But what I will do is just maybe do one edge. I could hit it with a hairdryer and see how that goes. But it will sort of uh, make this look like a really, I'll show you the difference. It'll look sealed, like a proper sealer. <sighs> Let's see. If you've got any questions, don't forget to leave some of your questions and comments in the uh, comments of our live here. I'd love to go back and answer them for you. And um, also don't forget that we do have some 
Lucky winners coming up at the end of our live. Now, this is just Fusion Mineral Paints Tough Coat, um, clear tough coat, and it's this is the matte version. So just making sure, sometimes if you're using a matte finish, there's a matting agent that can sometimes separate and go to the bottom of your jar. So they recommend giving it a bit of a roll like this to make sure that matting agent gets mixed all around, which I did do earlier. So I'm just gonna add some of that in here. And then I forgot to bring a brush, but lucky me, I can actually just use a dry cloth. You can apply this with a wipe on method. I'm just gonna dampen the edge slightly. And this is the edge I'm gonna show you today and then afterwards I'll finish it off once it's all completely dry. I'm just dipping that into the Tough Coat Matte Sealer and I'm going to show you the link for that. I'll do that later, so just let me know if you need the link for the sealer. Let me know if you'd like the sealer link in the comments. So I've just, I mean, the cloth was barely damp, um, but I'm just wiping that on. It's called a Tough Coat Wipe On Poly. So you can brush it on, but sometimes I like to get a really nice smooth finish by just wiping it on. Now, you can sort of see it gives it a nice, that's wet, so it will dry. A nice sealed finish of your stained wood. So we've stained this using paint. Watered down paint, I must say. And then we will do the same with each one of these little sticks to create that look inside the frame. Okay, so let us put this all together and knowing that we will be finishing this off after the live, but I'm gonna just kind of put it all together and then I'll have to pull it all apart to put my not upside down music version in the same frame. So let's have a look. We'll turn this over and I'll show you this in a minute. You'll be able to see it drying, but it does give it a nice finish rather than a chalky kind of washed out look, or oh, that's kind of really cool as well. I don't know, depends on what you'd like. Donna said you found some sheet music at a local thrift store. Yes, you can. And yep, Tammy says you can also print free sheet music online, so you can do that also. Uh, so this is the side that I've stained and sealed. Now we wanna put our glass in first. Grab that here. Be very careful with glass. I cut my finger once just on the edge of some frame of glass. This is a 12 by 12 wooden, raw wooden frame. So you can look up raw wood frame or unfinished frame. I um, found some on Amazon that I've added into the link in the description of the live. These are the little wood bits. Now this one may not, the one, the link to the one on Amazon in your, oh, you may not see this. Oh yeah, you will. You'll see it in the glass. I was just thinking, did I stain that for nothing? But no, you will be able to see it sort of slightly in the edge. Uh, now, the one I've linked on Amazon may not be the same as this. Just keep that in mind. All right, so here is our sort of like a little shadow box idea. So hopefully this will stand out but not be, I was hoping that it would be flatter. Um, but you may have to flatten your sheet first before you add it to your shadow box frame or the ones that I've linked, I think that they're more flat and don't have those little wood bits in them. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. And then we're gonna pick some winners for um, essential stencil prizes. I'll just shut that there so we can have a little look. Are you ready? Who's ready? <laughs> Ta-da, for our final reveal. Um, yes, Kathy says she found some wrapping paper that looks like sheet music. That's a great idea. Yeah, you can always um, naturally age the paper. Oh, that does look great. I like it. Let me show you. Okay, so there it is. Our Christ is born angel on sheet music idea. So I, I do like the stained look in the background and how we've just made a bit of a square out of the sheet music because obviously the sheet music isn't 12 by 12. Not most sheet music isn't. And your printers <coughs> are probably, you know, shorter with the paper, even if you're printing paper. So it works nicely on that 12 by 12 by just cutting out the square to just create a bit of fun there. And it doesn't matter if your stencil picture comes right out past the sheet music as it has done on the wing and down on the foot there. 
you can see that close up. And then we've got Christ is born there. So, and I'll show you, this is the edge that we have sealed. You can kind of just see the edge here where I've gone to the edge. That's the edge that we've sealed with the sealer. You probably can't see a, a big difference, but you can see on this end here how it's a lot of um, chalky looking as opposed to that one. All right, so let's see if we can see our winners, our lucky winners today from our essential. Now, don't forget, I've got my little sign up here. Um, use my code, iRestoreStuff, and you can find me, you can follow me at iRestoreStuff on any of your social media platforms. Go to my YouTube channel, you'll find lots of furniture painting tutorials there as well. Um, and I am one of Essential Stencils ambassadors here on their page. We go live every day, so don't forget to catch the next one. Here we go. Congratulations, winners. Let me see. We've got Diane, Arlene, and Jules. Diane, Arlene, and Jules, you're our lucky winners today. And in, that you've been tagged there. Well, some of you haven't been tagged. So someone tag Arlene and Jules, if you can. Let them know they are winners today. And um, email support at essentialstencil.com. Let them know that you're a winner on Sharon's Live today. So I'm Sharon from the blog, I Restore Stuff. Come and follow me over there or on Instagram if you're there too. And uh, we will do another fun live next week. I can't wait to show you what I'm going to do next week. I don't even know what I'm going to do next week. It's always a bit of a surprise until, until um, a couple of days before. Congratulations to those winners. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I will see you next week. Bye. Thank you.